All right, Math 1, I'm back with part two of the 3.3 video. I've got five examples. First two are pretty, pretty straightforward. The next two are kind of rigorous, and then the last one will be super helpful for understanding ones that just don't seem to make sense if you didn't watch the video. All right, so on the first one, we're, we're left with an or situation. All right, that's not really going to come into play until we solve each individual inequality. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take 8x plus 2 is greater than 12 and solve that one first. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, 8x is greater than 10. Divide both sides by 8. x is greater than, well, you can divide the top and bottom by 2 to get 5 over 4, which gives us 1 and 1 fourth. All right, there's part of my solution, part one. The next is, you know what? I'll do it in a different color so we can see it clearly. 22 is less than or equal to 8 minus 4x. I instantly see the x on the right-hand side. I'm going to do a rewrite. I'm going to say it's x minus 4x on the left, 22 on the right, and then flip this from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. So now subtract 8 from both sides. You get negative 4x is greater than or equal to 14. Divide both sides by negative 4. Dividing by a negative, if you recall from the last two sections, means we have to flip this. So it's the same in compound inequalities. All the rules that were there for regular are going to be the same for compound. All right. And then we take 14 divided by negative 4. You can cut the top in half and get, neg and get 7. Cut the bottom in half, get negative 2. 7 over negative 2 is negative 3 and a half. All right. So here's technically the solution. When it says solve each compound inequality, we've done the first part right here. Now part two is where we actually have to graph it on a number line. So I'm going to create my number line. We need at least zero. Because these are fractions, I'm just going to go by ones and then do some estimation in the middle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then left direction, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. That seems to fit both parts. So I've got x is greater than 1 and a quarter, so I'm going to go right here, put, a, put an open circle at 1 and a quarter, and send all my solutions to the right of it because it's greater than. For the other part, it's going to be an open circle at negative 3 and a half, so right in between negative 4 and negative 3, sending all those solutions to the left because it's less than. Now, since it's or, that means graph every element of what your solution has or just graph the union, that's the graph. And you're done. Let's try number two. Number two, again, you've got two situations, so you're solving two inequalities separately. Uh, I'm going to add three to both sides. and then divide both sides by 2. So x is still less than or equal to, because we did not divide by a negative, 19. Half of 38 is 19. So that's part one of our solution. Part two is going to be the solution to this over here. So I am going to subtract 6 from both sides to start this. That gives me negative 5 over 4x is less than 6. Now, remember when I said find a common denominator and then ditch the denominators? Yeah, we're going to do that right now. 
So I'm going to put a 6 over 1, multiply the top and bottom by 4, and get negative 5x over 4 is less than 24 over 4. Once they're the same, you can, you can ditch the 4s. And then divide by negative 5. So you should be seeing red flags there. Dividing by negatives means you've got to flip the direction of the inequality symbol. And then 5 goes into 24, 5, 10, 15, 20, four whole times. And it's a negative because a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And then, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, four, with 4 left over. So 4 fifths is the other part. All right, so we had an and situation here. So our job is going to be to graph the intersection of these two solutions or the shared space of those two solutions. So you know what? I'm going to count by fives because that's really close to 20, which is a multiple of five. And that's really close to negative five, which is a multiple of five. Five, 10, 15, 20. Negative 5, negative 10. So negative 4 and 4 fifths is just right of, five, of negative 5. And again, it's an open circle. And it's sending it to the right. Now, I'm not extending it all the way because I think I know that it's going to be a solution that's just shaded in between based on our example from the previous video. And when you see 19, that's just left of 20, and that's less than. So it's going this way. So technically, this solution set keeps going that way, and this solution set keeps going this way. But I think we can agree that the stuff that they share the intersection of those two solutions is everything between. So we shaded everything between. And that's your answer. So here's my solution x is greater than or equal to 19 and this. And then my graph finalized right here. Wow, that kind of looks like a face. See, here's a little hairdo. There's the face. Okay. Moving on to number three. All right, this is one of those, I, you guys saw this on a previous video, possibly 3.1, I think, where you guys had to figure out which of these elements would actually fit into the shaded region. So all I'm doing is that, again, with some, I guess, practice with some tougher, simple inequalities. So you're going to solve these two inequalities separately like you normally would. And then you're just determining which of these elements, which of these numbers, should fit into that final, that final answer. You guys should pause the video and see if you can do these on your own. All right. Let's see if you got the right stuff. So you take 5 times x and get 5x. 5 times negative 6 is minus 30, is greater than or equal to 8. The minus gets distributed to both parts, so minus 3. It's 8 minus 3, and then a negative of negative 12x. That's a positive 12x. All right, combine like terms on the right. I can't do anything on the left. So 8 minus 3 is 5 plus 12x. 
Now, normally it's helpful to get the x's on the left, so I'm going to do that. That cancels the x's on the right and move the constants to the right. When you have x on the left, it'll point your graph in the right direction. So you got negative 7x is greater than or equal to 35. Divide both sides by negative 7. And if you'll recall, because I've been saying it over and over again, when you divide by negatives, you flip the symbol's direction. So this is going to be x is less than or equal to negative 5. The other part to this solution is everything over here. I see all these decimals, so I'm going to multiply everything by 10 right off the bat. When you do that, this becomes 32. Minus 20x is less than 52x. Uh, minus 20. Remember, make sure you don't just move the decimals, but you also add a digit of 0 to the whole numbers. All right, I'm going to move the x's to the left, because when the x is on the left, it points your graph in the right direction. And then move the constants to the right. Unfortunately, this creates two negative negative situations. But as long as you know your stuff, you should be fine. So knowing your stuff means that same sign means add the two. So that'd be 72x. Keep the sign here. Now, I didn't divide anything, so I'm not going to switch this yet. I'm going to leave it as less than. And then negative 30 minus 20, same situation. Add the 2, keep the negative. Negative 52. So this is sort of like not so neat situation. Divide both sides by negative 72. You're taking a negative divided by a negative, so not only are you switching this symbol, but make sure you change it to positive, because a negative divided by a negative is always a positive. So 52 over 72, you can actually simplify that by cutting the top in half, and cutting the bottom in half, and then cutting the top in half again, and cutting the bottom half, uh, cutting the bottom in half again as well. So this reduces down to 52 over 72, which is 26 over 36, which is 13 over 18. All right, so you got two options here. You can, you can graph this now, or you can just ask yourself, does negative 2 fit in either of these solution sets? So here's what the graph looks like. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. Now this one is pretty clear. You put a close circle at negative 5, and then it's less than, so all the solutions to the left of that are legit. In addition, all the solutions that are greater than 13 over 18, which 12 over 18 is 0. 0.6 repeating, 2 thirds, so we have kind of an idea of what that number is, but not exactly. Let's check it out. OK, ask yourself this. Does negative 2 lie in the shaded region? Well, negative 2 is here. That's no man's land. So this is not a part of the solution set. It's not a part of the shaded region. Negative 17? Negative 17 is somewhere way out here, which is a continuation of that. That goes on forever. So this is a part of the solution set. Zero, it is not shaded. It's in no man's land. 3.2, right here, that would be in the shaded region. So you'd circle that. Negative 1 and 3 quarters, it's going to be somewhere around here. That is not in the shaded region, so you would not include it. Negative root 10, OK, so we're going back to this again, right? Your job is to know that negative root 10 on the continuation of the number line is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Here's negative 4. Yeah, negative root 10 is in between negative 3 and negative 4. That's also in no man's land. 
Right, so negative 5 thirds is the same as negative 1 and 2 thirds. So that's somewhere right here. Also in no man's land. And then negative 1.8, again, it's between negative 1 and negative 2, which is not in the shaded region. So the only solutions that actually live in this are going to be x equals negative 17 and x equals 3.2. All right, this is going to be a, you know what, I think I'm going to stop the video right now and then put the last two on a separate one. Sorry, this is going to be a two-day thing, a little bit lengthy. You guys can manage.